Hey class, uh, Mike Dixon here. We're going to talk a little bit about how to make uh, some box and whisker charts in this uh, in this video in Excel. So, first of all, also hope we're going to pick up some ideas about how to uh, what a quartile is and uh, uh, and uh, kind of this idea of spread around um, uh, around a median. All right, so let me explain this data a little bit. So what this data is is actually real data from uh, from wait times at uh, the Chicago O'Hare Airport for Terminal One. There's four different checkpoints at Terminal One, uh, checkpoint one, two, and it's actually two A. I called it three, and then four, uh, and then here are the average wait times for sort of each of these uh, time blocks uh, for different days of the of the uh, uh, of the week uh, in the last week from the week before this uh, I made this video. All right, so a bunch of data here, essentially, right? A bunch of numbers here. And we want to find out, see if there's kind of maybe some different distributions of data, if the data uh, looks a little bit different for different checkpoints, right? So as uh, those of us who want to travel, maybe we want to find which checkpoint would be uh, more likely to sort of be quicker to go through. Or if we are running the airport, we want to see if there's some kind of consistency or if there's some kind of problem in one of the checkpoints that takes longer than the other. So that's what we're after uh, in this data. And in particular, we want to understand the spread. So, uh, you know, sort of how long, you know, from the shortest weight to the biggest weight, and then how, what's sort of the most likely weight. That's kind of what we're after with this. So, describing the data. All right. So, the first thing we can do is kind of take these. Uh, let me, I got a bunch of stuff here. Uh, this is kind of in the wrong place. Just a second. Kind of through this, move it over to there. Oops. Okay. So we're going to look at the uh, the average. Uh, so this is pretty easy. We know how to do this. Average. Come up here and find the data. Control Shift up. Whoops. That's what I want. Hit enter. So there's our average. The min is equal. Uh, type equals min. So unfortunately, there's no like range function. So we have to use this min. So there is this first quartile third quartile. We'll do that in a second. So this median, we understand how to do that. We just type uh, equals median, right? We've done this before. Control shift up. Yeah. So this is annoying that it's doing this. Uh, okay. Uh, and then max. Let's do that one next. Max. So so far nothing new. We know how to do the min, the median, and the max, right? The new ones are these quartiles. So what is a quartile? So a quartile is just uh, essentially the median of the first half of the data is a first quartile, right? So if I just looked at uh, from the smallest number to the me the median number, and I said, okay, let's just actually just pretend like that's its own data set. Now tell me the new median of that. That's called the first quartile, right? And then if I did the same thing the other way around, where I said, okay, so here's from the min to the median, and now here from the median to the max, and I'm going to say that's its own new data set. Then I want to find the median of that, and that's what I call the third quartile, right? So the first quartile and the third quartile are just the middle of the uh, these the sort of two data sets that we might be able to separate. The second quartile is actually the median, right? So sometimes you might see first, second, and third quartile. Well, the second quartile is just the median, the median of the whole data set, right? So that's just all a quartile is, and, and Excel has a built-in function called equals quartile. Uh, so we're going to use this older uh, 2007 function, quartile. Uh, and it's, it's pretty easy. We just uh, uh, is asked for an array and then the quart or the quartile. Uh, so the array is, of course, just our data. Right? So there's our data. We're just doing it for checkpoint one. We're going to copy this over right, in a minute. Uh, and then the quartile, so if I hit comma, it says right here, here's our different quartiles. I can have the minimum is zero. First quartile is one. Second quartile is two. Remember, that's the median. It even says median. Third quartile and then four. So this is also says the percentiles. So you might hear uh, as the 25th percentile, that's the same thing as thinking of the middle of the first half of the data, right? That's all this all, all this is. So it's nothing mind-blowing, right? So that's what we want in this first case, is this first quartile. So you can either type in the number one or go down there and hit tab. So let me show you the data, I'll show you what I typed in. So here's our uh, here's our array and then comma one, right? That's the first quartile. Median, we could have done the same thing and just put comma two. In fact, we could have done that for the min too, comma zero, comma one, comma two, comma three, comma four. We could have done this all of this we just asked for using this quartile function if we wanted to. Quartile, control shift up, uh, three, right? Third quartile. 
Great. So um, this, thing, uh, this other thing I want to talk to you about is this idea of an inner quartile range. So an inner quartile range is all, all it's really saying, you'll see this in kind of textbooks and some other, it might show up in some statistical thing. It's just saying, tell me how big the middle 50% is. Meaning, uh, you know, there's this idea of a range, right? We've talked about range, which is the min, or the max minus the min, right? The biggest value minus the smallest value. And that's sort of how, how big the range of the data is. Well, the inner quartile range is really just wants to find the range between the first uh, the first quartile and the third quartile, right? Or the middle 50% of the data. Right? <clears throat> so we can, it's just another way of sort of chunking the data up a little bit, right? We just want to say how big, how big is uh, the distance between the, the third quartile and the first quartile. So there's actually no function for this either in Excel, but once you have the third quartile and the first quartile, you just say, well, there's the third quartile minus the first quartile right there, so three. Right? So we could just figure out the actual range. So the range, we could just eyeball this one, is 12 minus 1, so it's like 11. Right? So the actual range of the entire data is 11. The range of the middle 50% is only 3. Right? So what does this tell us? Well, it tells us that 50% of the data is, is only 3 minutes apart from one another. So that's actually pretty consistent. <clears throat> you know, The rest, there's some outliers over here in 12 uh, that, are, that are bigger is likely what's happening. All right, so this is just uh, sort of the basic statistics. Right? So this is... The descriptive statistics we could copy this over that we might be able to use to describe so the next step then is to be able to sort of display this in a nice way so that's where the box and whisker box and whisker chart comes in play so a box and whisker chart uh, just uh, visually shows us sort of the min the max and then we're going to draw a little sort of whisker to the uh, to where the first quartile starts, where the median is, and then where the third quartile is, right? And we're going to make a little box in there, so that's what the box and whisker. So uh, hopefully you've watched another video, the Khan Academy video, um, before you watch this one, so it's not a big deal. So let's just figure out how to do this. So in order to do this, there's actually not a pre-built uh, chart in Excel to do this. There are some add-ins you can add, but we can trick Excel uh, to do this. It's not too hard. The hardest part is sort of understanding this next little chunk of, uh, uh, of things that I'm, t uh, I'm asking for. It's a little bit weird, but we can figure it out. Hopefully, you'll uh, you'll catch catch on here in just a second. So uh, the first thing we have to do is figure out the distance from the min to the first quartile, right? So all we do over here is say here's the first quartile, right there, and we subtract the min from that. This is going to be how long the uh, first whisker is essentially, right? So how long, the length actually of the whisker, not where it starts and where it ends, but the actual length of the whisker. It's going to be like one unit long, this is in one minute. The distance from zero to the first quartile. Well, that's just the first quartile. We don't have to, we could do that minus zero. Um, this will become more clear in a second why we need this, but we actually just need to know where the first quartile should start, right? So we have to tell Excel to start at two and then keep going, right? So that's just the distance from zero to uh, the first quartile, right? And these will be different. So this one is, so this one is two, right? But then this one's three, and this one's two, and this one's three point seven five. Okay, the distance from the first quartile to the median. So this is the first half of our uh, of our box within our box plot. So here we go. So this is just the median minus the uh, first quartile. Okay, so that's just the the size of the first half of the box. The distance from the median to the third quartile. Same thing, so here's the third quartile, subtract the median. Again, that's the size of the second half of the box. Right. And then the distance from the third quartile to the max. So this is the other whisker on the other side, right? So here we go, here's the max, and subtract uh, the uh, third quartile from that. All right, so we actually should be good to go to make this graph. So here we go, let's just copy and paste this over. And let me show you how to do this. So uh, the easiest way, we, we're gonna highlight these uh, checkpoint, one, two, three, four, Hit the control button down, and then we're going to highlight just this middle, these middle three guys. We're going to deal with these other ones in a second, but this is what we're going to start with. Go into insert, column, and then we want this one as a stacked column graph. Click OK. Oh, I did it backwards. Let's see, how do we uh, fix this? I didn't do this before when I did this by myself. Of course it doesn't. Right? It's always uh, different. So I think if I click on this and say, let's see. Oops. Find this somewhere. Let's see, we made this a little slow. Weird. 
Okay, let's just try again. Delete that. Let's highlight these guys in the middle. Go up to the top. Hit control down. <laughs> control, go, stop. Is everything still highlighted? Yes. And then say insert, column, stacked. There we go. This is the what it should look like. <laughs> I don't know what's going on there. Except that this one is weird. It's still not quite weird. Oh, it might be this guy. Let's be this one. Let's see. Let's just move this down here and see if that looks like Back better yet. Let's move this guy. I think Excel likes it better when things are right next to each other. Sorry for this little delay in the video. Okay. Oh yeah, it's because we got to select this guy. That's exactly right. Select all of that. Insert column. This one. Yeah, that's what I'm after. Okay. So here we go. So this doesn't look right. This is not a box on whisker chart yet, but that's okay. We're going to make it. So the first thing we want to do is figure out to get the top whisker, right? So uh, let's do that. So click on these. This top, this top uh, green cells. Right click. Actually, nope. Let's just go from right. But click on that. Go to uh, layout, and then error bars. If you open up the box, you can say, "I want more error bar options." Now, what we want here is a uh, a plus error bar, right? We want it above the bar. We don't want on both sides. We just want a plus. And then we're going to go over here and say custom. So you can actually put how long it is, but we're going to use this custom thing. I say specify values. And then we get this little pop-up chart. So this is, before we do this, let's move these things out of the way. This is going to be weird in a second. Go ahead and specify value. Uh, positive error value is what we want. So click on this thing, and then we can actually click on uh, in here. So we want the distance from the third to the max right here. And then just close this thing, say OK. And let's look at this, make sure this is looking okay. So good, so now we have the distance. Yeah, this is the top whisker, so we're going to check this out in a second. So now let's click on this blue down here. Uh, this is wrong, yeah. Click on the blue, click on error bars, uh, more error bar options. Now we want a minus, right? We just want it going down. And we're going to say custom, specify values. This time we want a negative error bar. So before we clicked on this positive error bar, now we're in the negative error bars. And we now we want the distance from the min to the first quartile, right? So we want the uh, the whisker on the bottom. Okay. So the small the small side of the whisker. That's it. Click OK. All right. So this is it. So I know this doesn't still look right. The reason why is because we have this weird blue thing going on here, which we don't really care about. So let's actually look at the data. Remember, this is the distance. Kind of blue. Distance from the zero from zero to the first quartile. The only reason we have that in there is so that we can force uh, Excel to uh, sort of start the, f the the first quartile at the right place. But we can actually hide this, right? So this is the trick the trick Excel into doing this thing. Right click on there. Uh, we can see this little thing right here. This is the fill button. If you click on here and say no fill. Goes away, right? So this is actually right now. Let's get rid of these labels. We don't care about those. And we can make this a little bigger. Let's let's do that, and then double check that uh, everything looks right. Let's see. Okay. So here we are. Checkpoint one. We want to make sure we get this right. So our min. It looks like it's one. So let's see. Min, min is one. Let's see if the rest of these are right. Min should be zero, zero, and one. So here's zero, zero, and one. So that's good. The first quartile starts at two, right? And then uh, for the other ones, that's three, two, and three point seven five. So there's. 3, 2, and then 3.75, so that looks right. Uh, the median is 3, 4, 4, and 5. So the median is where these two, right, this line right in the middle. Okay. So that's right, 3, 4, 4, and 5. Uh, and then the third quartile is 5, 7, 5, 7. So there's 5, 7, 5, 7. And finally, the max is 12, 
10, 7, and 11, just like our data. Great. So we were able to sort of uh, yeah, trick Excel into making this, uh, these box and whisker plots. Uh, let's double check what these interquartile ranges mean so we understand what that means. So this is 3. So 3 is just the distance between uh, here 2 up to here to 5. Right? It's just the, the, how big this box is. Right? So this one is from, uh, what is this one? From this is like for 3 to 7. Right? So that's 4. This one is from 2 to 5 again, 3. And then this one's a little bit weirder because it starts at 3.75 and it goes up to, it looks like, 7. All right, so that's where the interquartile range. So the entire range, right, is the length of this from min, or sorry, from min to max. Interquartile range is just the inside stuff. Okay, so that's this video. Have fun.